Charlie King. Okay. And uh, she has some sisters that live in the area? That's correct. And does she have a brother also? She does not. Okay. Um, what, and you said your maternal grandmother lived in the area? That's correct. Okay. So you have an Aunt Rita who lives actually on Pew Road. 790 Pew Road. Okay. You have an Aunt Judy that lives there. 900 Yellow Springs Road, I believe is the exact. She's location. actually moved into your grandmother's house. That's correct. Right. Um, and then you have another aunt that lives there. Can you tell the jury? Carrie Hickerson lives in Holiday. Okay, Holiday, which is very close to the area, right? That's correct. Okay, Holiday being just north of Interstate 40. That's correct. Is that right? And actually, um, is Rita and Jimmy Austin, is their mailing address Holiday? That's correct. And your Aunt Judy, her mailing address would be Holiday? That's correct. Okay. Um, so your other aunt, Miss Hickerson, she's in Holiday. I believe her actual last name is Christi Christian. Christian, okay. Christian. Yeah. Um, and your grandmother, what was her name? Juanita Hickerson. Juanita Hickerson. And um, so do you remember exactly when she died? The date, I don't. Okay. Did she die around the 1st of March? I don't recall the date. Okay. Um, you, she died that spring of 2011, isn't that correct? If you say so. Well, I thought you testified on direct that she had died shortly. She had died before. She had died before April the 13th. Okay. I don't know the date or the month. I didn't visit them probably like a grandson or two. Okay, so um, it's just a fact you don't quite remember now. Is that right? I don't recall the exact date. Okay, and, and you said you don't recall the exact month your grandmother died either. Is That's that right? correct. Um, and your father, he's from the area too, isn't he? 1333 Bear Creek Road. And his name is Gary Autry? That's correct. Okay. Matter of fact, his, grand, his mother was from the area, wasn't she? She lived in the same house he does now. Okay. Uh, a little white house on Bear Creek Road? Brick house. Brick house on okay, Bear Creek house. Road. At one time, your grandmother had lived in a White House on Bear Creek Road, hadn't she? That's correct. Okay. And Bear Creek Road actually runs into Five Forks Road, doesn't it? That's correct. Okay. So it's over there close to the Bobo home? That's correct. Okay. Um, because the Swan Johnson Road runs into Five Forks Road, doesn't it? That's correct. Okay. Um, and your father's mother, her name is uh, Sudi Autry? That's correct. Okay. And Sudi Autry's sister happens to be Ruby Bobo, doesn't she? That's half sister. Half sister. Half sister is Ruby Bobo. That's correct. Okay. And Ruby Bobo happens to be Dana Bobo's mother. That's correct. Okay. Um, and when you were a kid, you spent a lot of time with your grandmother, Sudi Autry, didn't you? That's correct. Uh, and at one point, your mom and dad lived in that little white house that she had moved out of on Bear Creek Road. No. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're okay. right. They lived there and in a trailer there on the place. Okay, because they had split up when you were still pretty young, right? Real young. Okay. Um, so I'd like to go back through your version of events that day. You say the night before you spent the night at Angela Smith Scott's house. I believe I testified to that, yes. Okay. And you started driving down that morning. You said, what, what time did you begin to, do you remember what time you made your first phone call that day? To Mr. Adams? No, just the first phone call. You, you were so clear about your times that you were making phone calls. Do you remember what time you made your first phone call that morning? I believe I made my first phone call to, you, to Mr. Adams. I believe. Okay. And... Uh, so your first phone, you know, would you agree with me there's a little difference between text and telephone calls, right? Yes. Okay. And, I mean, when you testified on direct, you were pretty clear about the phone calls that you had made to Mr. Adams. Isn't that right? That's correct. Okay. 
I mean, you testified like that was a clear memory you had and not anything that you were confused or fuzzy in your mind, didn't you? The two conversations was clear. Clear, okay. So um, that morning, uh, you actually spoke to Angela Scott before you spoke to Mr. Adams. Doesn't that sound about right? Uh, it's possible I sent a text. Uh, no, I'm talking about a telephone conversation. You had a two-minute, 32-second telephone conversation with Angela Scott that morning. If your records reflect that, that would be true. Okay, so it's something you don't quite remember, the phone call that you had with Angela Scott. No, you're right. Okay. And then uh, you called Jay Taylor that morning. I did. Uh, you called Jay Taylor before you called Zach Adams, didn't you? If your records show that, that's true. And Jay Taylor is one of the guys you said you did cattle work for, isn't that right? Construction. I'm sorry, construction work for Jay Taylor. That's correct. And when you said that you had jobs that weren't government jobs, does that mean they were jobs that you weren't paying taxes on? That's correct. Okay. You didn't mean that you were actually working for the government. That's correct. You just kind of got paid here and there. Was it usually cash or checks? Contract labor. Okay. Um, and you didn't get any kind of uh, 1099 on that contract labor, did you? I paid no taxes. Okay. Of course, you're aware you're supposed to be ta paying taxes, aren't you? I suspect so. Um, and so that morning, you also sent some, you had some text messages going on. You texted, the first time you texted Angela Scott, it was at 6.50 in the morning. Does that sound about right? If your records show that. Okay. And then you texted it a second time at 6.51 in the morning? If your records show that. Okay. And then she texted you back at 6... Uh, scratch that. And then you text... You are the one that first texted Zach at 8.19 in the morning. So you made the first contact with him. Is that right? I believe that's what I testified to. Okay. Um, but the first contact you had with him was not a telephone call, it was a text message, wasn't it? If your records reflect that, that's okay. true. So that's a fact that you don't remember quite so clearly. I was reaching to establish contact. Okay. The, I don't think the state asked every call that I made that day. She asked, she was precise okay. in what she asked. And explain to me again why you were going to make contact with Zach Adams. I was looking to purchase a morphine pill. Okay. So you, why didn't you then just contact him at 6.50 in the morning? As I testified, I went down in the river, river bottom to give everybody time to wake up and get to moving. But if you really wanted some morphine that morning, why didn't you just go ahead and call him? He might have been awake, right? I guess it's possible, but that's how it played out. You would agree with me that a lot of times people that are on methamphetamines are awake at all times of the day and night. That's true. Okay. Um, and so your idea was to get a morphine pill. How much did you usually pay for morphine pills? $50 for a hundred milligram. Okay. And how long would a hundred milligram pill last you? I got two shots out of it two shots. So what does two shots mean? You had two like servings? Cocktails. Cocktails of methamphetamine? That's correct. And so if you took one cocktail of methamphetamine, how long would that last? Not methamphetamine, morphine. It depends on your tolerance. If you're a beginner, it lasts longer. If you're a heavy user, it lasts less. Okay, well I'm talking about you. I was a heavy user. So how long would it last? The intensity, probably an hour. Okay, and then? Maybe less. The effects would carry on, but the, the intensity of it was probably 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, and you shot these up? You shot up your morphine? That's correct. Okay, and did you have your own uh, needle that you used? Syringe? That's correct. Okay, did you reuse the same syringe each time, or did you get a fresh one? I just, I did it as, 
if I had access to a new one, I use it. If I had it used, and I used it. Okay. Um, and so you goal was to shoot up. You said you had some methamphetamine already. That's correct. Where had you gotten your methamphetamine from? Richie Pinkley. Okay. And uh, when had you gotten your methamphetamine? Maybe a day or so before that. So when you would buy methamphetamine, how much would you usually buy? Depend on the amount I had in my pocket. So at that time when you bought methamphetamine, how much did you have to buy? Maybe a sixteenth. A sixteenth? Meaning half an eight ball. Okay, half an eight ball. How much did that cost you? $150. $150? That's correct. Okay. So, um, and how long would that last you? A quarter of an eight ball? Um, Half an eight ball. It depends on how much you give away or and how much you've done in one day, but generally speaking, two or three, four days. If I was greedy with it, sometimes a week. Okay. And your methamphetamine, you shot that up also? Mixed with the morphine. Okay. Um, so would you do it in the same shot? You'd mix them together and do it in the same That's shot? That's correct. Yes? That's correct. Okay. Um, so where was it that you had your methamphetamine with you that day? Where did you keep it? I mean, in my pocket. Wrapped up in plastic or? I mean, it, in a sack in my pocket. You know, okay. either shirt pocket, pants pocket. Or... So what were you wearing that day? Well, wearing a pair of Levi's, a pair of red wing boots, and a Levi's shirt. Now, did you say probably or you know for sure? I pretty much dressed the same. I knew what I wore. So you have a good memory of what you were wearing that day? Yes, ma'am. And you're saying you dressed the same? That means you wore the same shirt and pants every day? I... I dressed the same, not with the same clothes, but in the same fashion. I wore a Levi's shirts, whether they'd be cut off or long sleeve from the winter, Levi pants and red wing boots, all the time working. Okay. So it just become a custom that that's what I wore throughout the day. Okay, so if you called Jay Taylor that day, that's because you were looking for work with him, isn't that right? If he testified to that, yeah. I mean, but I'm asking you, why would you call Jay Taylor? Maybe just to have a conversation with him, to see when the next job, see when the next, <laughs> see when we're going to work, maybe. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that your meth habit and your morphine habit were fairly expensive habits? I would. If you have a morphine habit and one pill costs $100 and you get two sessions out of it, it wears off after one hour, then basically each $100 pill only lasts you a couple, three, four hours. I testified that the pill cost $50. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. It was a 100 milligram pill. Okay, so a $50 pill is gonna last you just half a day? Is that fair to say? A day. One day? That's correct. Okay, so, um, so it was important for you to work so that you could keep the money coming in to, to support your drug habit. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So so that morning you sent a text to Zach Adams. Let me find it. At 8.19, and then you texted him again at 8, or you texted Angela Scott at 8.30. And right after that, you got a text back yeah, from I'm, Zach Evans. I'm going is that right? She's asking a question, allow him to answer. Is, is that right? Does that sound right to you? If your records reflect that, that's true. Okay. And so 
At 8.37, Zach Adams texted you back. Does that sound right to you? If your records reflect that. Okay. Um, and then you texted Zach Adams at 8.38. Does that sound right? If your records reflect that. So um, what was the contents of those text messages that you had when you first texted him? What would have been the content of your text message to him? I was trying to get a location to meet him where I could get appeal. Okay. Trying to get a fixed location as I testified. Okay. And you've said that then when he texted back to you at 830, 837, do you have any memory at all of what it is he said to you? I don't know if I read the text or not. Okay. So then the next thing you do is you call him at 850. That's correct. Okay. And if your records reflect it, yeah. Okay. Um, 8.52 you call him and it, at this point you're already in the Cox 2 area. The where? I'm sorry. You're already south of Interstate 40 at that point, aren't you? If your records say so. Okay. Um, I mean you recognize that with the cell phone records, the cell phone records in this case can show the cell tower that your particular phone was using on that day and time. You know that, right? Your Honor, I have an object. I, it, My objection is, unless she can establish that Jason Autry understands cell phone and that he has some knowledge of what, how phones bounce off of towers. She can ask. So you're aware that the records in this case can give some information about which cell phone towers the phone was using that day. I don't understand the workings of towers. Okay. I mean, if you say so, I, I'm not one to argue it. I mean, okay. Maybe you're more knowledge of it than I, but I'm not, I'm not knowledge of it. Okay. Well. So that morning you were also communicating a lot with your girlfriend, Angela Scott. That's correct, isn't it? If your records reflect that, that's true. Okay. Um, and then, so tell us, you get a, you speak with Zach Adams on the telephone. And I think you said on direct that he said he would call you back when he got to a location? That's correct. Okay. Do you remember his exact words that he said? He said that he needed to see me. So you called him, and what did you tell him when you called him? I called him trying to establish a buy on morphine and figure out where they was. Okay, so t tell me. And he told me that they were busy at the moment, that he would call me back, I believe is what I testified. He said he would call you back. Text back, I mean, you know. Okay. You said that there was a volley of texts. But it's clear in your mind that there was a telephone conversation between the two of you. That's and correct. You, you said, I need to see you. That's you, correct. And he said he would telephone you back. That's correct. That just, they were busy. I, okay, he was busy. He telephoned that you he back. he needed to see me. He needed to see you. That's correct. Okay. And then you called him back again. If that was at 840, you called him. That was at 840. 52, you called him. Your Honor, I'm going to object. Oh. If that's a question, and ask the question instead of just making a statement, that was at 842. He hasn't answered whether he knows the time. She's reading Refra records. Refrain your question. Okay. Um, Refrain, I'm sorry. So the next phone record shows that Mr. Adams called you at 853 that morning, but he reached voicemail. Does that sound right to you? If your records reflect that. Okay. Then the records reflect. Would you agree with me that the next phone call is you to Mr. Adams at 8.55 a.m.? 
Yes. Okay. Now, is that the phone call that you're saying uh, he called you? Okay. What happened in the second phone call then that when uh, you Maybe called the him? voicemail picked up and I, I dialed right back. Okay. Possibly that. Okay. And so what happened in this second phone call that you had that morning at 8.55? That's when they told me they were at Cousy's, meaning 30 Yellow Springs Road. Okay. Did he say anything else besides he was at Cousins? Said he needed to see me. Again, he said he needed to see you. That's correct. Okay. And? I headed that direction. Okay. So, it's your testimony then that after 855 you headed that direction. Do you remember where you were when you had that conversation with Mr. Adams? Probably, probably in the general location of the interstate. Somewhere okay. in that, maybe, maybe not directly sitting at the interstate, but in that general location. Okay, so how long would it have taken you to get to Shane Austin's trailer? I'm not directly sure. I mean, precisely you, the minute, I, well, you know, you, 10, 15 minutes maybe. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes. Maybe. I, You've driven it before. That's correct, but this is six years ago. Right, but you have a a good memory of a lot of things that happened in this case. That's correct. And there were many times that you went to Shane Austin's trailer. That's correct. And many times you went there from your mother's house. That's correct. And from Angela Scott's house. That's correct. So once you get to the interstate, you can guesstimate how long it would take you to get from, and when you say the interstate, you're talking about 641 and I-40. Well, Isn't that right? I was coming from Birdsong. So you had I come down Birdsong Road. Okay. Come in that direction. Explain that to me then. I, where would you have been in Birdsong Road? As I testified around 8 o'clock of making a call at Palmer Tool and Die, I got on Birdsong Road and proceeded south over to what you said was Coxburg Road. Okay, so where would you have been at this this wildlife refuge? Where is it? That's in Camden. Okay. Is it on the river? It is. Okay. And so it's north of Interstate 40? It is. Um, is it directly up 641? It's, uh, it's off Highway 70. I believe it's west going into New Johnsonville. Okay. Um, and if I were to provide you a, with the map a little bit later, you'd be able to point out on the map where this area is that you were that morning? That's correct. Okay. And then you said you traveled down Birdsong. So tell me, how is it that then you went over? What, what direction would you, what route would you have taken to get from the wildlife refuge to Shane Austin's trailer? If you leave the refuge, you'd have to get on 70 East to turn by Palmer Tool and die, which is that's not Birdsong Road right there. That's a cut through <coughs> over the Birdsong Road. Birdsong Road runs south from Benton County to Decatur County. Okay. So where's Palmer Tool and Die? It's on 70. Okay. And is it at the intersection of another highway? It's not. Okay. It's at the intersection of, there's a road beside of it. Okay. That cuts through to Birdsong Road. Okay. So you would have cut through there, and then where would you have gone next? South on Birdsong Road. Okay. Toward Decatur County. Okay. And 
Then where where would you have gone after that? At some point in there, it was determined to where they was, and I proceeded to make my way to 30 Yellow Springs Road. Okay, how did you make your way over there? Maybe through Coxburg West, comes through at Eagle Creek. Your Honor, at this time I'm gonna I'm gonna object to when the witness says probably. If he doesn't know, I'm gonna object to him just guessing and speculating about which way he went. And he said that several times about. If you don't recall, you can say I don't recall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Do you recall that bit of information that morning about how you got to? 30 Yellow Springs Road. At Eagle Creek, on Birdsong Road, I cut through and headed toward the interstate at 641. Okay. Eagle, at, at Eagle Creek, that's Coxburg Road. Okay. There's a Coxburg Road North, there's a Coxburg Road West. There's several Coxburg Roads. Okay. So, you cut through and you got on 641. Then from 641, how did you go? Coxburg Road cut, comes over to, um, is it McElwain Road, I believe. McElwain Road runs into 641. 641 crosses the interstate bridge to where, um, I can't think of the name of the road. It comes out beside my grandmother's. Whole Hammer Road, it may be. Whole Hammer Road comes out. Yellow Springs Road, take a route. 30 Yellow Springs is one mile away. Okay. That's the route. Okay, very good. Um, and so, do you have an estimate of what time you reached Shane Austin's trailer? After nine. After nine o'clock. Okay. Um, so, when you got there, you said you see the uh, white Nissan pickup truck parked down by the trailer. That's correct. Um, and you said there's a gate there. I'm, I'm assuming the gate is closed because they have a dead body on the other side? The gate was open. The gate was open, okay. You have a specific memory of that? I mean, the gate was open. Okay. I mean, um, and so you go in, You, what do you do next? I pull up behind the white Nissan 4x4, step out, I view a fire burning, large fire, Dylan Adams standing at the door without a shirt on, Shane Austin running around hollering, y'all need to hurry up and get the goddamn hell out of here. We got to I don't want you to say any hearsay. I, I, she, there's no, she, she asked a question. No, I didn't. I didn't say ask what people said. I said, what did you do next? The scene. He, he can't go into hearsay. Okay, so, um, and you said, <coughs> describe this burn barrel to me. Describe the burn barrel? Yes. 55 gallon barrel with all the paint off of it, with flames shooting out the top of it, three to four foot high. Flames are three to four feet high? With a strong smell of, of fuel and the components of meth burning in the air. Okay. Um, so what do you do next? I purchased the pill. And who did you purchase the pill from? Shane Austin. And how much did Shane Austin charge you for the pill? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. So, what did you do? Right? Did, what did you say to Shane Austin to purchase the pill? Can I buy? I'm here. Can I buy a pill? Can I get the pill? I'm ready to get high. And did you know for sure he would have one? I did. How did you know he would have one? In the conversations that we had. With Zach? With Zach. And I may have even had some conversations 
through text and back and forth with him. So you think that maybe... I knew they were together, right. is what I'm getting at. So you, you have a memory of texting Shane Austin that morning about pills? That's correct. Okay. And so... Um, you what knew, I, You knew one would be available. Um, once I was told that they were at Cuz's house, I mean... Now you notice... This is self-explanatory. Okay. You noticed the body in the back of the truck right when you pulled up, isn't that right? That's incorrect. Okay, so you didn't notice that there was a body in the back of the truck? I purchased the pill and went and got high. Okay. And then come back and ask Mr. Adams what he needed assistance with. At that time, he said, burying this body. And I told him, I hate, I said, God damn, I ain't know about little Joe. And he said, Jason, it's not Jojo, it's Holly Bobo. Okay, I'd like to pass up a piece of blank paper to you. Can you please sketch for me what it would have looked like that day? I can get you a what, yeah. what the scene looked like that day, where the trailer was, okay. where the car, let me get you a smaller thing. Where the Nissan truck was, where the burn barrel was. You want you want my view from the road. Yes, what you see when you pull up from the driveway. Do you, you want this in great detail or just well, a yeah, sketch? Yes, I'd like it in in enough detail that it includes where the burn barrel is, where the gate is, where the cars are. Wait a minute, let me. The trailer, burn barrel. Truck. What else? Where's Gate. your car? Gate. Gate, yes. PT. Yes, your PT cruiser. Where's your PT cruiser? What else do you want um, to know? Well, where's the front door to the trailer? All right. Let me, let me get caught up right here. Trailer mm. Barn Barrel Gate PT 30 L Springs Road and Barn Barrel. Did you label these things? I did. Very good. Okay. It's, it's in the rough. It's in the rough. I done it as fast as I could. Um, now, Mr. Autry, you're aware that I had wanted to meet with you before trial, aren't you? No, I, I wasn't aware of that. You weren't aware that I had requested through your attorneys to meet with you? I was not. If they brought it up, I don't recall it. I don't object to any, any conversations. He said he wasn't aware, and then he... Which attorneys did you make an attempt through? Uh, oh, Mr. Scholl and... Mr. Paris. Alright. Um, he said he wasn't aware, okay? Right. I mean Forgive my old work, work. Okay, so here's the road, Yellow Springs Road right here. That's correct. And then here's the gate. It blocks the driveway. That was open. Okay. Um, 
Here's where you've parked your PT Cruiser is the, the last yeah, part. Right. And then here's where the pickup truck is. Generally, and the, yeah, that's correct. So the pickup truck would have been somewhat sideways to you, is that right? If you're parked behind it and if the road's turning, you're almost looking at the pickup truck from an angle, not from straight behind it. Yeah. Okay. Is this this little round circle right here is the burn barrel? That's correct. And then this is the trailer and the front door? That's correct. Okay. So when you go to shoot up, you're you're gonna mix up the um, uh, morphine. How do you mix up the morphine in order to shoot it up? <clears throat> you, cr you crush it, squirt water on it, heat it, and pull the liquid off. Okay, and where did you do this activity? In the front of the PT Cruiser, in the driver's side seat. Okay, that PT Cruiser belongs to your mother, is that mm -hmm. right? I believe it's registered to Stephen DePriest. Okay. Um, Titled to Stephen DePriest. Okay. Perry County, Tennessee. So where did you get the water to mix up the morphine? I had it with me. Okay. Um, you mix up the morphine and then how long do you have to cook it? 30 seconds. Okay. You just heat it in a metal spoon. It releases whatever. I don't know the chemical, how it releases, but once it comes to a boil, you throw the cotton on it and you can pull the fluid off. The morphine becomes liquid. The cotton screens away the buffering or whatever's in there. Okay. And then you put it in the syringe? You use a syringe to, to pull it with. Okay. You pull it in the same syringe you're going to use. Okay. Did you have an arm that you usually use to shoot up the morphine with? Yeah, I did. Which arm? Right arm. Okay. Um, So you said it makes two shots worth, so does that mean you just used half of the syringe at that time? I used half of the peel. Okay. So you have the other half still left for later? That's correct. Um, so how long do you sit in your car now once you've had, you've injected the morphine? The entire process, less than 10 minutes. Do you cook the morphine and the meth together in the spoon? You do not. Okay. So you load the morphine into the syringe and Just then... Either way you want to, either way you, you can go either one. There's no, there's no scientific method about which way it needs to go first or, I mean, you, you can, either way you want to do it. So then you, do you remember that day, which one you did first? I do not. Okay, you... My goal was to get it in the arm. So how long did you say you sat there after you injected yourself? I think I testified that the entire process lasted about 10 minutes. So can you estimate for me now about what time it is that you're finished sitting there and getting high? Once that... Once that euphoria kicked in that you could probably say that my track of time was affected altered so you're saying that this uh, these drugs affect your your mind and your thinking <laughs> yeah okay. yeah um, so you get back out of your car what's the next thing you do or say I get out of the car, the PT Cruiser, Zach is standing at the door. Who's standing at the door? Zach is standing at the door of the Nissan 4x4. 
I asked him what he needed my assistance in. I didn't hear that. I asked him what he needed my assistance in. Okay, and what did he respond? To bury the body. Okay. Is that when you notice that there's a body in the back of the truck? That's correct. Okay. What is that body? You said it's wrapped up in something. What's the body wrapped up in? A multicolored, maybe like an old farm handmade quilt. Okay. Do you remember what colors it is? Multicolored. Okay. There was multiple colors. Is there one color that was predominant over the others? May not. I don't recall if there was one color present more than the other. Okay, so it's a fact you're not clear on. It's a fact that I don't know which color was dominant. Okay. Um, so he says he needs help getting rid of burying a body. That's um, correct. What was your response? I made a statement that I hated little JoJo had been killed. Okay, so you just jumped to the assumption that this is little JoJo. Prior to that, it was being discussed. Well, but but you jumped to the assumption because he didn't say it was little JoJo that he needed help burying. He did not say that. He said he needed help burying the body. Okay. Burying the body. And how did you reply? I said, damn, I hate that little JoJo got killed. And he responded... It's not JoJo, Jason, it's Holly Bobo. Okay, and then what was your follow-up response? I said, I agreed. And I said, we're going to have to leave here because I don't want Shane or Dylan knowing that I'm involved. Right, so you said, um, I, I thought at some point you said, who's Holly Bobo? That was on the ride back from the river when I asked how she get who. Okay, so there's a person, a, a female, in the back of the car. He says, I need help burying this body. You are all in at that point. You're like, okay, we got to, I don't want Shane and Dylan to know I'm involved, but I'm all up for helping you bury the body of an unknown female to me. That's correct. Okay. And so, do you whisper to him, meet me up at the church? Uh, talking like I'm talking here. How do you keep Shane and Dylan from knowing what you were doing? They were not. Dylan was inside the house. He never came out. Shane was throwing shit in the barrel. He okay. was over here. So... At that point, you get in your car and you... I tell him that I won't take the car to Yellow Springs Church. If there at that time, I parked at Yellow Springs Church. Okay. When I got out of the car, walked out to the road, he was pulling out of the driveway, heading my direction. Okay. And so he's... And Yellow Springs Church is just a very short distance from Shane's trailer, isn't it? less than a mile but now when you park at yellow springs church because the church is on a hill and there's all those built-in tables around it you can't park in the back where no one can see the car can you i parked right beside the pavilion but it's clear and yellow springs church actually sits on a corner doesn't it it was the car was in plain view plain view right there excuse okay. me so um you park the car there. How much, how further behind you is uh, Zach Adams? When I got out of the car and walked to the road, he was pulling out of 30 Yellow Springs Road coming this way. Okay. Coming toward Yellow Springs Church. So you could see, you could see all the way down the road, see him coming. From the church, you can see the driveway. Okay. So. During he, the fall, when the leaves is off. Okay. You can see a vehicle down there. Okay. So he comes up. Does he even pull into the driveway, or are you just standing on the road and get in? I'm at the road. Okay. You get in the truck. I'm assuming it's, a, it's an extended cab, right? Front seat, back seat? 
Nissan 4x4 extended cab, white in color. And so you get in the? Passenger side. Passenger side, okay. You say that's when you notice that there's a gun riding around on the floor? In the floorboard and the on the driver's side. At some point, did you think it was dangerous riding with a gun floating around on the floorboard? In my line of life, it's quite common. Okay. So um, you all start heading, and you're going to go bury this body. Is there any talk at all before he pulls out? Because he doesn't even pause at the church. You're in the road. He, he stops. You get in. You don't even sit and park and discuss anything for a minute, do you? You start driving. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct. Okay. And you've got a body in the back just wrapped up in a quilt. Holly Bobo is what he said. Yes. So you start driving, and you're headed towards the river. Not, not in the beginning. Okay. I raised the question that there were no shovels or pickaxes. When I looked in, I seen nothing to dig with. Okay. A conversation ensued about I didn't know where you could go with a dead body and find stuff like that. What about Shane's house? Shane's trailer? What about it? Did I mean, you try to what? get a shovel or pickaxe at Shane's trailer? I did not. Did you consider at that time sending Zach back to go get a shovel and pickaxe at Shane's trailer? I don't No, I mean, I did not. Okay. Um, so let, I'd like to look at the route. I have some maps that I've got. Can we take this diagram that he's made and have it marked as an exhibit? I'd like to have it admitted. These are similar locations. I printed a lot of maps because I didn't know which direction it was going. This is the map I want to see. 
I'd like to just show here, uh, show you a map here. This is uh, uh, starts with Pew Road. So after you leave uh, the church, where do you go next? Let me find my location here. I think. I don't think the church is going to be on there. Um, do you want me to trail that with a pen sure. that you gave me? Sure, yes. To the best of my ability. Oh, Where, can I, Your Honor, can I ask a question? Yes. Where do you want me to start? Okay, here, I found one right here. I'm, I, I don't understand where north, south, east, and west. I believe I've got a pretty good idea. What? How about we start with this map? Because this map is going to have uh, Yellow Springs Road on it. Yellow Springs Road is going to be around over in here. Mm, what about? Let's see. Um, Here's Yellow Springs Road, and here's Pew Road. So the church would be right there. At that so you're saying right here is the church at the forks of the road? Well, because it's at the corner of Pew Road and Yellow Springs Road, right? Where the road kind of forks there. Well, no, we're we're actually at 30 Yellow Springs Road right here at this where you said, because Charlie Daughtery runs into Pew Road and Yellow Springs Road. So this mark that I've got where you pointed is 30 Yellow Springs Road. The church is, uh, if you'll step back over here, I'll show you. Okay, sure. The church is actually right in here. This is the road. Okay, right. Up. You know, there's three roads right, right there. Right, shows. where it kind of... Yeah. Correct. Forks right there, so right yes. Right there would be the church. Okay, can you just put a C there then? Okay, and put a and for Shane's direction. trailer, why don't you just put a SA for Shane Austin? Judge, I think at this point we need to not have a conversation there allowed. If she wants him to make certain marks, let's, let's do it in the form of okay. like a legit request. And well, would it be possible for him to sit over by the projector and he can make marks? on the map as the jury can see? Any problem with that? No. Right. Mr. Doctor, you can step down. Yes, sir. I've got what uh There's a chair right there by the projector. You put the piece of paper on the projector. It will reflect in the same direction it's put on. Right there is the wrap the house, the church. All right, you can, if you'll just sit down, you can even point. Where's the point? No, I mean point with your finger, even. No, you can sit over here. You can point on the oh, okay. over here. You can use, actually use your finger on the over there. Okay. Sorry. You don't even have to look at the screen. You, can just, you don't have to look at the screen. You can just look right there at the paper. Okay. So will you point to Shane's trailer for me? Okay, and then point to the church. Okay, so when you're in the pickup with Mr. Adams, which direction do you go from there? That's down Pew Road. So you go straight across. When you get to 641, would you point to 641 for me? Right here. So you're going to go straight across 641, and that's Ducktown Road, isn't it? Duck Farm Road. Duck Farm Road. So when you're on Duck Farm Road, then my map runs out, and I have an extension of that. I believe you're looking where Duck Farm runs into Michael Wayne Road, maybe? Sure. So here I have a second map. If you look at the second map, 
it uh, kind of picks up where that map left off going east with Duck Farm Road. Well, let's locate Duck Farm Road somewhere here. Yeah, in this area right, right there. Here. Okay, if you can move that all the way onto the screen so the jury can see where you're pointing. Okay, okay. Can I go ahead and map out the route on this page? Yeah. Sure. Now you're at Sugar Tree. You're, well, right here, we take this way here. This, this being the center of Sugar Tree where the roads, where the three roads connect, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying? Yes. Okay. We head this way. Ask you the next map. Or what road are you on there? Are you on Morgan Creek Road? Uh, I believe you're correct. Does Morgan Creek run to 133? Do you have that? I believe so. <coughs> 133 being, you're talking about the Bird Song Road <coughs> exit? Morgan Creek running right. Now we we So now, can you start with the first sheet on the bottom, kind of, and then, I'm sorry. we've already gone over this one, you were on Duck Creek Road, so now let's start with, we're, we're right here. yes, you're just right there, and if you'll just show the jury where you were on Duck <coughs> Creek Road, if you'll point down here, you just, all you have to do is look down here. Do, do, these arrows reflect the route that you took. Okay, so tell me what road you, you're on, Morgan. You're on Duck Farm Road. You said. Well, I think we got off Duck Farm Road and got on McElwain okay, Road. So tell me, McElwain Road's next. Um. And then where do you go next? Let's see. We come to Sugar Tree. Take a left. We go over to Morgan Creek Road, over to Birdstone Road. Okay. And then let's see the next sheet of paper because. This is uh, Morgan Creek runs into Birdstone, Birdstone runs into 133, which is the interstate. Okay. This been the location of uh, the murder. This been the Tennessee River. Okay. There's no absence of your maps. Just the details of the gravel roads. Okay. So. This been this been the slews that I'm talking about with the rock pile right here. So I'll pass you this because this has a satellite image 
It's probably a little bit. And so it can, you can see the, uh, it's Ward Hill Road that you turn on to, to get over to the river, right? Well, you see this road right here? Yes, that's Ward Hill Road, isn't that right? I don't know. Of course, according to this map, it's not. If you see right here, it's Ward Hill Road on this map. So, right here on this map is Ward Hill Road, according to what you've got. Would you agree with me that right around in this area on Ward Hill Road, there's a big gate and a road that goes off to the left hand side? I would. And that gate is closed actually between November the 15th and March the 15th. <coughs> they, they don't allow you to go down there in the winter time, do they? That's correct. And so you have to turn there, you go left, and that's when you snake around through the water right there. You kind of go over this way, oh, and then you meet up with this road right here, and you snake around, don't you? <coughs> that's incorrect. At 1.33, left there on the bridge, the gravel road runs parallel with road. It doesn't snake around off on Ward Road. You go to Ward Road when you get to the bottom and take a right, I'm assuming. Right. This road right here when runs I miss all the way. This road right here runs all the way parallel all the way up to 133. Ward Road back up here snakes off and goes to the boat <coughs> ramp. Okay. So this is just a you're really too far. You really should have turned down a little bit further if you wanted to be precise, in my opinion. Okay, there's an even closer one. That's correct. Right here would be. This is Interstate 40, Tennessee River Bridge. Where Jason stood, looked down the street. Where the truck pulled around, and unloaded the body. Where the shot went. Right. So, um, and this area right here is all water. It's, um, like you said, it's a slough, right? This area here is water This is slough. a slough, and this is a slough with Tennessee River being right in here. And there's actually a small area, a small pipe that goes under the road right here. You can drive over exactly between right. these two sloughs. Exactly right. Okay. And then, if you go down further over here, there's more riprap over in this area, isn't there? This whole bank is underneath this green is rip wrap. Yes. And then even you, even all the way around. Yes. More rip wrap there. Yeah. And um, even, even rip wrap over here for flood control and washing. Sure. And and that's because the water levels there vary a lot. It can flood that area and sometimes in the winter when they let the water down, the whole area is dry, isn't that right? This, this is never dry. I've never seen this dry. But, but it's closed in the winter time. You said from September to April. November, said, November to March. March. November to March, I'm sorry. Okay. And then even if you go further on that little road right there, you go, here's where hey, you're saying everything night. occurred. You can actually go further. You can actually get all the way to the deep part of the channel over here, can't you? That's correct. Right here is where I said that we turned around, looked at the beach, and headed back this way. Right here is where the murder occurred. Okay. Right here is the culprit that you testified, that you stated. Right here is Rip Ralph, here's Rip Ralph, here's Rip Ralph, right here is this mile. And this is all salute. Matter of fact, you can see some trees stump sticking out over here, can't you? You're absolutely correct. Both sides. Both sides, tree stumps where it's been flooded and and initially there had been trees. Is that right? Originally there was a tie yard there back in the day. That's yes. the name of his tie yard. Yes. And so this whole area has one road in, one road out. Would you agree with me on that? One hundred percent. So it's um and that road that we're looking at, this whole gravel road, it is a very narrow gravel road. 
it, it's not a wide. It's wide enough for two vehicles. To meet. But they have to go slowly when they meet. If you're coming down there and you meet another car, you have to go pretty slowly because you would agree with me there's not any shoulder on either side of the gravel road. You're correct. Okay. That was kind of a question where you made a statement followed by a question. You might break things up and ask direct questions, please. Yes, Your Honor. So there's no shoulder on that road, is there? No, ma'am. Okay. This is a, a better view of it right here. I mean, you, you can see there's very little room. Just There's enough for two cars to pass safely without scrubbing mirrors, doors, boat. You can pull a boat trying to do that. There's enough room to safely pass it. There's no... You got to stop and get out and watch and nothing like that. There's enough room to save passage. Okay. Um, so you said you're in the car. Let me just, now that we got the map down on how you got there, you say that you're in the car and you are, uh, at first you, you take note, you're back at the church, you're leaving the church, you take note that you have no pickaxe or shovel. Is he done with the map? Okay, if you're done with the map, let's will you hand them to me and then let's get them kind of in order so that we can. I'll pass them to you just real quick and and that we're going to identify them. So, Mr. Autry. Hey, probably stay there until you identify them. Yes. We'll file them as exhibits. So once we get them filed as exhibits, you can return back up here. But she's going to be handing them to you, so just stay put. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to start with this first one that you had. That's the one with Shane's trailer on it. Would you just mark that as a number one and put your initials on it? Okay. Then. The second map is the one that goes across Ducktown, Duck Farm Road. Initially. Yes, please. Okay. The third one is the one that goes from Duck Farm Road or Sugar Tree to the lake. Then we have our satellite pictures. First is the overall view of the satellite. No, what number does this need to be? This would be four. Four is a big view of the satellite picture. Three is somewhat closer up. This number five. That's, I mean, right, sorry, number five is somewhat closer up. Six is even closer. And then seven shows where the road dead ends. Thank you, sir. Are you done with it down there? Yes, sir. All right. I can pass these forward and have them mark as exhibits. Let's, 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 you want to make them collective since I got individual numbers? Yes, Your Honor, that's All fine. Right, they collected exhibit 184. You got a clip? We can turn it off for now, especially since it makes it hot. Yeah, we can get that up too. Now, Mr. Autry, would you agree with me that it takes a good 30 minutes to get from Shane Austin's trailer using the back roads to get over there to the river? Mm, no, I wouldn't agree to that. Would you agree it takes 25 minutes? 
I don't, you would have to factor in time and speed and I mean I, how fast was we going I mean I don't know you know I would agree that the time span was 15 to 30 minutes okay 15 to 30 minutes I, I would agree to that okay so we have you back at the Yellow Springs Church it's the Yellow Springs Methodist Church is that correct that's correct okay um, so we have you there you're le you're driving away from there and you're discussing the fact that there's no shovel and pickaxe um, but mr. Adams is driving you haven't discussed yet where where you're going no ma'am okay um, I'm assuming your client had done figured that out so under the assumption but I thought it was your suggestion that you could gut a body and put it in the river to float you're the one that came up with that idea it was it was not my idea to dig a hole or bury okay so um, was there discussion between the two of you that you were going to initially bury the body at the Tennessee River that was the no no okay what was the discussion initially the question was was will you help me bury this body okay. there was no destination set no place or nothing else I, mean, I assumed that I was getting into a vehicle and going to a predestined location okay so how soon after you start driving do you realize there's not a predestined location time are you, are you saying time wise yes uh, shortly okay. shortly meaning before we made it to Duck Farm Road okay. Duck so, Farm Road go ahead I'm, I'm fine for you to explain before we made it to Duck Farm Road and where were you gonna say Duck Farm Road was that's across from P Road Okay. we so, went across from P Road so can you remember at the best of your memory what that conversation is like which conversation that you have in the car with mr. Adams and you say do you say where's the shovel yes okay no. I mean not you, you confused me I'm sorry I'm not trying to confuse you I'm trying to understand so. I testified that I told him that I did not see no pickaxes and shovels in the back of the truck because that was going to be pretty clear from the moment you got in the truck you knew there wasn't a pickaxe or shovel in the bed of the truck isn't that right that's correct okay um, and so clearly I recall that from viewing the body at 30 Yellow Springs Road when I was asked okay so um, at some point you drove by mr. Adams house or very close to mr. Adams house did you think about going there to get a shovel or pickaxe no, I wasn't driving I mean, did it, you make that suggestion I did not okay um, so before you get across 641 and the road name changes from Pew Road to Duck Farm Road what has been the conversation at that point that now you know you're not going to go bury the body that was the conversation I mean that's a short that's a very short drive okay so tell me the best of your memory what that conversation is I told mr. Adams that I did not see a shovel and pickaxes in the back of the truck and I did not know to where we could go and get one okay with a dead body in the back of the truck okay did he respond I'm not sure okay so then what did you say next I started telling him about the body at the river that I had seen in the past so you're saying that in your that, past that, go ahead in your past you saw a dead body at the river right there where you said 
the bushes were that looked like they were flooded. Okay. Floating. So when was that that you saw a dead body there? Early 2000. Okay. Did you report that body to anybody? I did not. Um, do you, did you ever hear in the news what happened with that body? Never did. Okay. And so one day you just happened to be at the river, that same spot where you took Holly's body. And no, where we. Where I met you, plural. Where you two took Holly's body happened to be a spot that 11 years earlier you had also seen a dead body there. That's correct. So when you had seen the dead body there before, the body was floating. That's correct. And clearly the turtles had not eaten that body by the time you saw it, had they? They were working it over. <laughs> but there was enough of the body left from the turtles that you were able to see Determine, it you're correct. And determine it was a body. And right there in that slough, you would agree with me that there's not a direct river current there because it's a little slough off to the side, wouldn't you? It's still water, yeah. Still water, okay. And so what do you say? You have this memory that comes to you. How do you communicate this memory to Mr. Adams? How did I tell him about it? Is yeah. That what you... yeah, how did you tell him about it? I proceeded to tell him that back years ago that I seen a body floating down there And the only thing holding it up was the guts and the gases. I proceeded to tell him about the days on the Tennessee River that I'd spent multiple times seeing old dead fish floating belly up that the guts and the gases until they was what was holding them up. Okay. And so what did you say next? We begin a course that direction. So there, there was never, um, there was never a let's go down there and do it type of moment. That's just where we ended up. So he just naturally began to drive towards the river. I guess it, I can't read his mind, but I assume that he thought that, that was a good idea. So you have a conversation with him. You say, listen. Back in 2000, I saw a body floating in the still water of this slough. And I've seen a lot of dead fish. The fish are dead, and the one thing I know about them is they all float to the surface. That's correct. Uh, because of the gases in the inside of the fish. So my suggestion is we go put a body in this same spot. I never made no suggestion okay. that we go. We just okay. naturally go there. Head worked our way. way that way. Okay. Um, and so when you get there, is there other conversation in the car as you're driving there? There he is. We talk about, uh, what was that? The one road that you were, Ward Road, Ward Road runs to, uh, Ward Road runs over to a boat ramp. Yes. We drove over there to make sure there was nothing over there. We come back. We were discussing, we were discussing not being seen, making sure that, quote, unquote, coast is clear. Do you want me to come over there? I'll show it to you first. Hey, let's, let's take a break. It, it's stuffy in here. Hopefully it'll be a little cooler up there. We'll take an uh, afternoon break for 15 minutes.
20th, it took place without any law enforcement there, but between the district attorney's office and Mr. Autry. Um, and I would like to have copies of those notes, Your Honor, because Mr. Autry has given so few statements. The notes that the district attorney took are absolutely critical in this case because of the fact that they are material to me doing an effective cross-examination. Prior inconsistent statements is what we have to impeach Mr. Autry with. Um, I recognize that many times notes are considered to be the work product of the district attorney's office. However, there's actually case law that says in, specific, in special cases it would be it is possible that they would be discoverable. I say that because the district attorney's office set this meeting up without law enforcement, because normally law enforcement would be there and would write up uh, having the district attorney's office turn over their notes from that three-day proffer session, then I would ask that those, and those notes could be redacted in case there's any work product like impressions that they have of the witness or anything. But if not, I would ask that those notes be filed under seal and made part of the record so that on appeal, the Court of Criminal Appeals could determine whether or not those notes were in fact discoverable. Whether they're discoverable or not, we don't have notes. Okay, end of it. <laughs> and to be clear, we, have, we didn't take notes. It's not like- right, that's notes. even more. <laughs> We don't have notes, we didn't take notes. And I would assume they're talking to every witness, it's just not failing. All right, I'm ready for jury if they're ready. Mr. Autry, please. You were talking about the boat dock off of Ward Hill Road. That's correct. All right, and do you see Ward Hill Road on that map? I do not. Um, No, I do not. No, I mean, it's, this map's not big enough. For, <coughs> it's not like the. Can you show me? Okay. 
Um, There's. That ward here, that right thought that says that's Stenson Holler. This map says Stenson Holler. Okay. Is that down where, do you see where the boat dock is that you were talking about? Is this right here where you're, is this what you're calling the boat dock right here? Well, I'm asking you if you see the boat dock where you were, that you were talking about. I can't testify that that being the boat dock right there. You can't? Not on this map, I can't. Uh, I can't see a boat dock here. Okay, let me pass up one, another map. This is not a satellite picture, but this is a map with some roads labeled. Let's see if up in that upper right corner, to see a road marked worth it. I do. Now, if you look at that map and compare it to the one, the satellite picture, can you tell in the satellite picture where that same? If this is the if this is the location where the the the, the state or federal whatever it is boat ramp is if this is it then that's where it is i mean i cannot see a boat ramp here right but do you see where a road is marked ward hill i do okay now when you look at the other map on the other map can you see where that same road is but enlarged it says stinson holler okay does it look like it's the same road there Maybe. I don't, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if this well, is. That's fine. I mean, if you it, can't it, identify it, that's fine. I will say this. It's in the general location, but the, the names is different. There's no boat dock visible. Okay. That's fine. If I had a... Maps over the past year. No, I'm just okay. <coughs> Next, we had talked earlier about the. If I can just have those maps back since you weren't able to recognize me. I think that. Uh, Let me just pass. Uh, a map up to you. Now, I'm not familiar with this Camden uh, Wildlife Refuge that you were talking about. Is it anywhere on that map? Highway 70, Camden Landing. I believe, not 100% sure, that this Camden Landing Road that runs into 70 yes. before you cross the Tennessee River yes. is the general location of where that is. Okay. So that morning and when... Th it's not marked. <laughs> this is not marked. Refuge, Camden... I mean, this... I'm assuming that Camden Landing Road is the road I mean, I don't know. I mean, this, this is not a... I don't want you to assume. I want you to tell me where you, where you were that morning. Let me pass you this map. See if that map says it a little clearer. Hmm. Okay. We're, we're on target now. Rockport, 
We need, if we're going all the way to Austin, we need more maps. <coughs> this one ends it. Can you look at the other two I gave you? We need to go further south to get to Austin. But the other two I gave you, do they? These are all coming south from Benton County. Okay. And these are coming. From Benton County to Decatur, south, Birdsong Road. You need you need There's south of Interstate 40. Is what you need next? See that one helps. Mm. See, I'm sorry, I don't know which way you went, so that's why it's hard for me to. Oh, I, no, you no went. problem. I, you're not you're not you're not bothering me. This is not what you need. Okay, then let's go back to the maps. Was it? Did you retrace part of your steps that you did? I'm in, I'm in, I'm here. I'm here. I've I've made my way from the refuge to North Forty right now. I need from North Forty to Shane Austin's house maps. Oh. That's that's um that's no, not that, yeah that, that's north of all of this. Well then let's get the exhibits that I put in already. Oh, I see where you are now. Yes. We, those are already in. So it's the 184 collected. It's the little maps, the sheets. We need um, Whole Hammer Road over to Yellow Springs Road. That's what we need. We need south of, of Interstate 40. You marked as number two. Okay. This is uh, this is after we got in the vehicle and headed toward the alleged quote dump site. This is this this map is is, is our tracks after I got in was. Yes, but you can make a mark on that map too. That's going to take you down over to Shane Austin's house, right? We may be at least making uh, a dollar judge. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you need, you need Whole Hammer Road, D Road, and Yellow Springs Road. That's what you need. Yeah. Um, we're right here. See, this is Duck Farm Road. But you didn't get it from here. You can go over to here to P Road, and then I'll hand you the second map. But I stopped on this map right here. We need. Okay, so you can get to Pew Road from here, and then I'll hand you the next map. Where's Pew Road at on here? It's right there, across from Duck Farm Road. But, see, but you got to go down Hohammer Road. I went down Hohammer Road before I got to Pew Road. Let me hand you all the maps. Okay. Thank you. You see it? I do not. Okay. We have part of the route marked out. Hold on, I'm on what? Let's go on. Uh, I don't know. You're. If you had, if you had the east view of this map right here, the eastern view, meaning. This portion here. Western view. No, Western view, Western Western. view, I'm sorry. Okay. That so that would be that would be what we need to pinpoint the exact location. Okay. Let's go over what you have. from that morning before you spoke with Zach Adams and you're saying that you start you were over here somewhere by the river is that right and let me focus it more. I believe may I, may I stand up your honor you may. 
Wait a minute, you about to go up a lead. But this is where you're speaking, right? Here. Can I have the corner? I'd say we're blocking everyone's view in 30 years. That is what we determined or decided or you agreed to went down <coughs> to the refuge. Let me be clear. This. I don't know where the refuge is. I'm asking you. We never determined this being a refuge. We, just, we decided that Camden Landing Road went to the river. Okay. We, this, this is not marked a national refuge on your okay. mountain. Yes. We're, we're just in joint agreement that this could or possibly be the spot. Okay. So next, you are on inter you're on Highway 70. Is that right? Going west. Uh, that's toward Jayville. That's back toward Camden. Yes. Yes, that's west. Okay. And then you turn. You're going to turn left on one of these roads, either Palmer Road or, or Caps, Caps Road. Road. Yeah. They, if you see them right there, they run adjacent, right to the same location right there. Palmer Tool and Die. Palmer Tool and Die is in this general location right here. One of, both of them roads runs to Highway 70. Okay. As I testified, I do not know the name of the road that I went down. Right. I assumed, Ben, it was besides Palmer that that was Palmer Road, but that's only an assumption. But what you know for sure is next you get on Birdsong Road, is that right? That's right. Both of these roads run the Birdsong Road. Actually, Caps Road is real clear about it. But I think you all can make out some type of detail there. It's not a very good map. Uh, over to Birdsong Road, and then we went south down 191. Okay. That'd be in this direction here. So next, you travel down further down Birdsong Road. Well, I'm lost now. So we end up, you end up down here. Well, we're, we're looking for 191 South. So this is 191 South. Okay, down to, okay, down to Eagle Creek, as I testified, and over to Coxburg, then to McElwain. Then after you get on to McElwain, you're going to turn right. Over down to 641, down to the interstate, and this is where we run out of. Okay. Then, once you get to the interstate, you keep going down 641, further down the interstate. That's incorrect. So you cut over on this little side road over here? It, if you cross 641 south, yes. if you cross going south, yes. there's a road, the first road to the right. Okay, that's this little Spence store loop road. And it cuts over to Hohammer Road. Okay. Hohammer Road <clears throat> runs to Yellow Springs Road. Yellow Springs Road runs to Green Road. It's all in a location that's very small. Let's just, you know, just minutes on each road and it's the quickest way. So it's this. The, the roads ain't what they look like on here, like long travel. I mean, some of them ain't. Knock down Spence Road ain't 150 yards before you cut off on another road. So Holehammer Road cuts over, and are you saying it runs along the interstate right here? Holehammer Road, yeah, Holehammer Road runs alongside the interstate down to. Right here, where my finger is. It's running along the interstate, and then it goes down over here to Yellow Springs Road. I don't know if that's Holehammer Road there. I mean, that may be it right there. I don't know. That may be it right there. Because it's running all the way from up here. It's going all the way from up here. That's correct. I mean, if it follows the interstate until it finally veers away and goes over to Yellow Springs Road. I, mean, uh, I don't see the name of it, but I, I'll agree with you if that's what, you know. I mean, I don't see no name on the whole Hammer Road. <laughs> Yellow Springs Road, P Road. Well, would you agree with me that sometimes roads may have kind of country names that don't necessarily make the maps? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I thought every road was named and was on the map. 
I mean, the little roads around the river there were, and you know, there. Yeah, I'd like to this have. This is a state county road. I mean, it should be named, right? I'd like to have uh, these maps seven, eight, and I mean, eight, nine, and ten made a collective exhibit. Let's just add them eight, nine, and ten to the collective exhibit number one eight four. Part of the continuing series, more or less. Do you have a question on this? Pen. Is that what you said? Do you have a paper clip? No, I don't have a bus clip. Okay. So last week, when we were in the process of you telling your story, you had arrived at the river. Um, now, you didn't go on the interstate because you wanted to go to the back roads, is that right? What? What? To go to the to the river that morning. Explain with the, by myself, or, or are you talking about Camden Bottom? No, I'm talking about when we were last telling your story. You were telling your story step by step about what happened on the morning of the 13th. And... Before we took the break, you had gotten to the point where you'd gotten to the river that morning with Mr. Adams, and there's a body in the back of the truck. What are you wanting to know? Wait, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just I'm, pointing I'm wondering. to you where we were. Okay. okay. Um, so at that point, you say that you arrive, and you were telling us that you had driven down to the boat dock. Did you I, all I drive to driving. the boat dock? I wasn't driving. Okay, you, you rode down to the boat dock. That's correct. Okay. Um, which is actually the go off to the right to get to the boat dock there. As you're going in towards Ward Hill Road. Is that a yes? Can you answer out loud? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so tell me, what did you do down at the boat dock? I made a circle and come back. I made a circle. Might have circled and seen no one was there and started the trip back. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> what happens next? We drive over to the location of the murder. Okay. And you're, because this is where you've seen a body before, you clearly then at some point uh, communicate to Zach Adams where you think the best location is. Is that right? I told him where the deepest part of that slough was. The channel, I okay. believe, is what I testified to, the channel. And what's your testimony where the deepest part of the slough was? Do you got a map? Let's get the map back out. I mean, uh, I can sit here and say it, but nobody's going to. I mean, I pinpointed it once to the state, but... You're going to need a map that, that has, you're probably going to need your map, to be honest with you. Them, them maps right there. Let's try first with this close-up that we had here, that we looked at earlier. Let's see if we can see the deepest part of the Just a little bit more. Uh, Would it help if the lights were down? Could you see better? Go ahead and try. Uh, the jury can't see. Neither can I. The location that that the state had drawn up. I mean, your your, your map is not. If, well, this is water up here. I yes. understand this that. This is number six. Right here is the water. Number one, eight, four. Yep. 
Are you in agreement that there's a patch of land right there with a, <coughs> with a channel through it? Because that, that's what I testified to. Took my up just ain't. There you go. Alright, points back up. I can't see it, but I believe it's the one right there. He's handling that thing. So Your Honor, may I approach? You, you can step in. Will you put just a little X where you right see the there. deepest part of the channel is? Okay, we get a, a pin and just make a small X there. Somebody's going to have to give me one. They come right. This. This is the deepest part of that. Okay. The, the water runs this way, and the flow of it, the silt is all back down on this end. It's all marsh on this end. This is the, the, the bluff part. side, so to speak. If you, if you look at it, it's not straight off bluff. Okay, so make a mark right there where you say the deepest part is. All right, Mr. Gray, you have a second. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. 182. All right, you just made an X on 182. Thank you. Do you not still have a map up there, do you? Um, I do not. Okay, so you suggested to Mr. Adams that the deepest part of the channel was. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. And so what happened next? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> what was we at? We were we were coming down. What happened next? I mean, we we were coming back that direction from Ward Road, right? Is that yes. where we was? Yes. We pulled down that long gravel road. Did I testify? Did I run out there and looked at? Went underneath the bridge, went down to the river, circled by the river bank, come back up, pulled in, made a circle, backed into the rock pile, got out of the vehicle. At that time, I grabbed Miss Bobo by the upper torso. Mr. Adams let down the tailgate. We brought her out. The, okay. You haven't mentioned your this your saying that you needed to gut her so at which where are you along the trip when you mentioned that she'll need to be gutted I never told him that she needed to be gutted okay you just said that other things yeah. floated because of yeah I, I never once he, he was not acting under my direct command okay so you don't know for sure then he was gonna go get a knife and gutter well he when I when I walked away from the upper torso, he was digging in a fanny pack in the back in, back extended cab of the truck. Okay. So you don't know what he was doing? He was digging in a fanny pack in the back seat of the extended cab truck. And then at some point you said you all set her down on the riprap. How steep is that riprap there? Degrees wise? Yes. 25. 25 degrees? So Incline, like this. Okay. I don't know if that's 25 degrees, I mean, to be honest. Okay. So you set her down there. Um, he walks back, he's digging in the trunk. What do you observe next? Not in the trunk, in the back of the, in the back seat of the truck. He goes around to the truck. I observe a foot move and I hear a sound. Okay. A sound of distress. Okay. What I believe to be his right foot. I then walk to the passenger side of the four before Nissan and say, This fucking bitch is still alive. You said this fucking bitch is still alive. Those exact words. Okay. What did you say next? It's everything stopped and we met. <laughs> At the front of the truck, at the, at the 
the hood. And I looked at him and I said, she's hurting my name and us speaking at that time. How would she have heard your name at that point? She's in the back of the truck the whole time this is going on. We were, we were discussing burying the corpse at Shane Austin's. No, you didn't, because I specifically, you said, he said he needed your help. Burying the body. And I asked you specifically what was said. You never said he said your name. Your Honor, I object. You can Forgive me. Examine, but you can't make statements. You, so far, you have not mentioned at what point he called out your name, have That's you? That's a statement. All right, have you? The question. I don't think that I testified to that. You're correct. Okay. So now you're saying there are some things that you left out of your testimony, conversation that was had, that you've left out. Aren't you saying that? No, I'm well I'm not no I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm just I'm I'm telling you what a six year ago conversation was in the best manner that I can. Okay. I'm to trying to the, go slowly. So can you then tell me at what point your name was said? No, I cannot. Okay. So you say you moved to the front of the truck. She's over on the riprap. How far would you say the truck is parked from where she's on the riprap? I think I testified to the jury the distance between this wood and the jury box. So Approximately. For the record, can you say feet? Four to six foot. Four to six feet from the front of the truck. No, from the tailgate, from the back of the truck. We backed in there. Right. But I thought you said you all moved around to the hood of the truck to talk. We did. So now how far is she from where you are at the hood of the truck? Whatever the length of a four by four Frontier Nissan pickup is added to that footage. Well, I don't, will you please? 24, maybe 24, 22, 23 foot, maybe. I don't know the, the okay. length of the, of the truck. Okay, so you think you're maybe between 22 to 24 feet away from the body? I suspect that's the amount. I, I, I'm not just 100% sure how long that truck is, but okay. I know how the distance that we backed up to the rip wrap. I, I don't know the length of that truck. Okay, and so you've just said she's heard my name. What else do you say? Can you be as... I said she's heard me talking and, and heard my name. Okay. Did you say anything else at that point? I did not. What was Mr. Adams' response? Just a dead look, just thousand yard stare, silence. So he says nothing. He says nothing. He turns, goes around to the driver's side picket, to the driver's side door, gets the pistol out of the front floorboard. At that time, I tell him, hold up, let me go over here and look. I run to the curb that I testified now, to down. You testified earlier that at this point you were angry. Is that right? I did not. Okay, I thought you said you were yelling at him. I did not. The fucking That's incorrect. bitch is still alive. That's incorrect. Okay. So, at this point you're not angry. You're not upset. I was on my way to the straightaway to look and see if anything was coming. Okay. Continue. Continue. I looked down the straightaway, which was approximately 200, maybe 250 yards. You can see that way. I looked back, told him nothing was coming, and at that time, the pistol went off. I was underneath the bridge, and it sounded like multiple shots that go boom, 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 boom down the river bottom like that. And I looked up, 
was that stunned me. I looked up, and Martins flew out both side, flew out from under my side of the bridge. At that time, it was like dead silence. I heard a boat took out running back over, there, and I said, "Somebody seen us or heard us." At that time, we placed Miss Bobo back into the pickup and proceeded to leave. Saying nothing else between the two of you. Not till I said something about driving erratic that we need to slow down. And that's at the same point when then you suddenly recognize that this could be a possible federal offense? Correct. I knew from previous experience that firearms are not allowed. So what was your previous experience? I mean, I just, I was born and raised in the South. I understand the rules and regulations of federal property. Plus, it's posted on the entrance, no firearms for everyone to see. Gun with a cross in it. So where's, where's that entrance where it's posted? It's generally at the entrance of a, of a federal property. It's posted. That, are you saying it was posted on that particular property? I don't know. Okay. I know from previous times before at other places. This ain't the only refuge I've ever been on. Where, where's another refuge you've been to? Camden Bottom is a refuge. Duck River Bottom is a refuge. Eagle Creek is a refuge. Bustletown is a refuge. Mouse Tail is a refuge. I mean, the government has property all over the state of Tennessee. Each one, you have rules and regulations that they expect you to obey. And so you would have known all this before you headed out that day towards the river, is that right? Because you say it's all from past experience. I knew this before, yes. So, in trying to calculate what time you would have gotten there that day, you said you arrived at Zach's, at Shane Austin's house after 9 a.m. Sometime, yeah. You said it took you about five minutes to get your pill and cook it up. Is that accurate? I think I testified to about 10 minutes inside the vehicle. Okay, so that would put it at about 9, 10 to 9, 15. Then you get out of the vehicle, you have a short conversation. Answer? Yeah, he nodded I'm his head. sorry. Can you answer out loud? I'll agree with you. Okay. Um, so then you get to the river. Would you agree with me you get to the river no later than 9.35 or 9.40? I would say, I would say between 9.40 and 10 o'clock. Okay. 9.40 and 10 o'clock. Would be my. I believe that, that that's the time. Keep in mind that I was high. So, I mean, the, the, exact, the exact minute I'm not clear on. So being high, then, does that affect your memory? That and time, I guess so, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're, we're discussing an event that happened six years ago. Okay, so um, in the middle of all this, you were able to take a telephone call from your mother, Shirley King, that morning at 9.42, weren't you? If your records reflect that, that's true. You had a per, approximately a 40-second call with your mother, didn't you? If your records reflect that. Your mother has a telephone number with an area code of 901, doesn't she? That's correct. And the last four digits are 5662, aren't they? That is, um, 
That is, her husband's, her boyfriend's sister's phone. Okay, but it's a phone you can call her on, isn't that right? That's correct. And then that morning at 10.35, you called Angela Scott, didn't you? If your records reflect that. And then at 10.36, Angela Scott called you back. If your records reflect that. Okay, so what time do you think you left the Tennessee River that morning? We were there less than an hour, I would say, somewhere between 40, 35 to 45 minutes. Okay. Um, so if you're there 9.45 to 10, then if you're there 45 minutes, you're then leaving about 10.30. Is that right? Is that, is that the earliest you would have left, 10.30? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Now... Um, did you take the interstate to go back home, back to, to Yellow Springs Church? No, ma'am. Okay. So you took, uh, did you take the same route you came with to go back to Yellow Springs Church? No, ma'am. Is there a different route you took? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you tell me, let me get the maps back. Let's see if we can go through which map, which way you went back. It's going to be using the same maps that we've already had, isn't it? No. No. Okay. Let's just start At some point, we're going to run back into one of the roads, though. Okay. I can get you a pen of a different color. That pen was blue that you were using. Green pen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. This you actually handed me the right map. Thank you. This is going to be rather simple. Do uh, do you want me to Just date try. and sign, or do you want me to sign this new route back to? Uh, no. For the record, you're looking at map number three, three. and you're putting it in green pen. That's correct. Just if you'll just draw arrows going back the way you came. We, uh, yeah, that. Next, let me hand you map number two. Okay. See, on map number two, you can see where you went. We're, um, uh, we're, This, this same, this is good all the way back to, um, I don't know what starting point we had here, Mark, but to wherever this ended, this is, this is the path back. So everywhere the arrow points one way, the arrow pointing the opposite way is the path back. The only difference is, is where the other exhibit you had looped back around to Morgan Creek Road. Yeah. So what you're saying, instead of taking the north route up here to go back, that's, you took the north route to go to the river, you took a southern route to go back. 
Uh, we took a route over to Morgan Creek Road on that map that I marked green right there. Down Ward Road over to, what was the other road? Over to Morgan Creek Road. Morgan, it goes over to Morgan Creek. And then back Bird's down on. the same path. All we done, we bypassed the 133 exit. Instead of going back up by the interstate in the same way we came in, we went down back around by the landing out. Okay. So you meet up back over here again where Birdsong Road runs into Morgan Creek Road. Is that okay? Let's see here. Okay. Let's go. Nick's Land. Ward Road is where we decided maybe or maybe not the uh, boat ramp was. Do you not have your pointer? Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This road down right here is marked down to here, and I think it's, uh, what's the name of it? Dick's Landing. Dick's Landing runs around Morgan Creek, where it joins back in right here. That's joins right there. What that is, is it's just a shorter path over to the, just a different route in, different okay. route out. And then can I route. see? Quicker the, path out is what it is. Can I see the map in your hand? That's traced back to, I believe, Interstate 40. I believe is what we got marked on there. So this one, you're just going back the way you came? We just, yeah, once we hit Morgan Creek Road, the same roads we tracked in, we tracked out. The only difference was, was the shortcut along the river road over to Morgan Creek Road instead of that. Okay. And so does it take approximately the same amount of time to get back? You know, the Not even a little less. Little less, okay. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know the exact mileage, but I know that, one, that, that the path back was shorter than the path there. Okay. <clears throat> How much shorter would you say? I don't know. Okay, so that morning then, um, 10.35, you said on direct that you checked your phone and you realized you were supposed to go have lunch with Angela Scott? That's correct. What time did you usually eat lunch with Angela Scott? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And where would you go to eat lunch with her? Benton County Health Department. Benton County Health Department. And where is that? What road is that on? I, I, maybe, maybe Hospital Lane. There, there's a hospital there. Maybe it's called Hospital Lane. I, I don't know. It's, why, why I don't you, know the road. I mean, I know where it's at. Why were you eating lunch at the health department? Health department was about an eighth of a mile from her job. Did you bring a lunch or were you buying a lunch at the health department? I generally bought a lunch. I wasn't buying no lunch at the health department. I bought lunch at other places and met her at the health department. Okay. I've never met her. You never what? I never bought lunch at the health department. Okay. Um, But this was up in the city of Camden, is that right? I don't know if it's the city limits or not. But, but it's kind of close to where the main town is? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's off 641, okay. just precisely right there off 641. Okay, and then at 1140, you call Jay Taylor again, don't you? If your records reflect that. Jay Taylor. Jay Taylor. Okay, it was 
chair preaching about the time I was driving here. Eleven forty. You called Jay Taylor, didn't you? If your records reflect that, that'd be true. You had a forty-five second telephone call with him. If your records reflect that, that'll be true. And then at twelve oh six, uh, Angela Scott called you. If your records reflect that, that'll be true. And at twelve oh eight, Angela Scott called you again. If your records reflect that, that'll be true. And then Jay Taylor called you back at twelve oh nine. If your records reflect that, that'll be true. So you had multiple contacts with Angela Scott during this day, didn't you? I testified to the state that I didn't have time to get there and take her lunch, and that we spent the lunch hour talking and texting. That's correct. So she usually... Um, only had a 30 minute lunch, is that right? That's correct. So if you met her, you said at 11 o'clock usually? That's correct. So you'd only need from 11 to 11.30 to have lunch with her, wouldn't you? That's correct. So what time are you saying then that you saw Zach Adams again? <clears throat> I think I testified at 2.30, around 2.30. Okay, and how is it that you got back in touch with him at 2.30? I'm not exactly sure. If, if I believe that I made the phone call. Well, let's... that you called him. I believe that's correct. I just... I can't remember the, the exact... So on the way back, you've, it's your testimony that Zach Adams has shot Holly Bobo. Uh, you've heard birds flew. You heard a boat start up. You never saw the boat that you heard, did you? That's correct. Um, you hear a boat start up that you don't see. Uh, you put the body back in the pickup truck. And Zach starts driving fast. You tell him, whoa, whoa, you need to slow down. And then... As he's driving, you look at your phone and you say, I need to go, I need to meet Angela for lunch. Does that sound right? That's correct. Okay. Can you tell me specifically how that conversation went? Was there anything else to it? There was not. No? So, he, do you say, please take me back to my car at some point? I did not. So he just naturally took you back to your car? That's correct. Um, you got out of the car, no conversation when you got out of the car? We had the conversation on the way back okay. about how allegedly, or how she, how he knew her and how she got back. Okay, so tell me how that conversation unfolded. I asked. You said, how did you know her? That's correct. Were you more specific in your question, or? I mean, that's can you tell specific me, as it gets. Can you tell me as best you can, word for word, what Mr. Adams said? I can't tell you word for word. What's the best you can remember? What I testified to. Well, can you tell me again, please? Mr. Adams said, Natalie Renfro, Natalie Bobo, was stripping at the Interstate 40 prostituting, selling her body for drugs, and she had, she had been coming down there at his house, having sex, and she had showed pictures to Zach of victim Bobo, left the impression that she would join him, or he so also did, said... That, did Zach say that gave me the... He also said that the victim had been to his house. Okay, so did Mr. Adams say it that way? Did he say, uh, Natalie Bobo left me with the impression that the victim would... I testified that I didn't know exactly word for word, but what I could remember of the conversation. 
as I told you before, I, I, did, I couldn't rehearse word for word. You asked me that, that I can't. Okay, so that's the best you can that, remember. That I tried to get another peel. I had done the other half, and I was looking to re-up. So when did you do the other half? The time that I spent alone. Where were you during that time? North of Interstate 40. So where north of Interstate 40? I mean, you would have to get the maps back out for me to show you probably every road I went down. Okay. I, I spent I spent a large portion of that day riding around. So you're saying you're just driving around north of Interstate 40? That's correct. And while you're driving around, you shoot up the methamphetamine-morphine combo? The rest of it. The rest of it. The rest of that peel that I purchased earlier. <laughs> and you continued to drive around while you were high? That's correct. Okay. So you didn't pull over and stop anywhere to shoot it up? Well, yeah, I, forgive me. Yeah, I did. I mean, obviously I had to stop to do it. Where did you stop to do it? I'm not exactly sure maybe maybe near my trailer mom's trailer there's a back road that cuts through a lot of times I got high in there okay um, so then you drive around so it's your testimony you never saw Angela Scott that day during lunch that's correct okay. um, at 2 o'clock, you call Mr. Adams and you try to arrange a buy. What does he say to you? Come on. Okay. Come on. And what do you do then? I go to his residence. Okay. Um, how long does it take you then to get to his residence? I arrived at his residence around 2.30. Okay, and so when you're at his residence, what do you do there? I parked, when I pulled in 2.35 Adams Lane, Austin, Dylan Adams and Jack Adams were standing in front of Dylan's Silverado pickup. At that time, we got in the Silverado, me on the passenger side, Shane in the middle, Zach driving, Dylan in the extended cab. So why would you then call him at 2.35 if you were already at his house? Well, maybe I arrived at 2.38. I mean... I'm testifying that I got there around 2.35. So why would you call him if you were already about to be there? Why did you call him a second time and talk to him? Why did you try to call him a second time? No, I don't recall that, but if your, reflect, if your records reflect that, I'll, I'll agree that I made that call. Okay, so... How long does it take you to get over to Dottie's? M minutes. Okay. And how long are you there before you get your next pill? Minutes. And do you use the pill there? I do not. So then you, as soon as you get the pill, you leave? We leave. And at that time, there's no discussion between you, Dylan, Shane, and Zach as to what happened. Is that right? 
not between you. No, I testified about an argument and a fight. Okay, but, but that wasn't involving you, isn't that right? That's correct. Where do you go when you leave there? To Angeles. Okay. To the, to the quick mark, quick stop. <coughs> what time did Angela usually get off work? 3.30. Now, at some point that day, you also texted Michael Douglas, didn't you? If your records reflect that, that would be true. Um, it's my boss, one boss I had. Did you ever work for Michael Douglas in the evenings? I worked when his schedule wanted me to work. I mean, when he said work, I worked. So sometimes you would work for him in the evenings? And I, I've worked all day for him many days into the evening. Do you have any specific memory about what your text to him was about that day on the 13th? Work. I mean, he's... He's a prominent man. He's he's in he's not into no criminal stuff. But it would be clearly work, clearly work related. Any any discussion that pertains to him would be work related. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the Birdsong Road exit that you went to. You're saying that day you went to the Birdsong Road exit for the purpose of. Dumping a body, isn't that right? I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. But you'd also been to that same bird song road exit, or the Tennessee River. You were also at the Tennessee River on April the 6th at 12.13 p.m., weren't you? I don't know. It's possible you were there on April the 6th at 12.13 p.m.? I don't know. Is it possible that you were still there at Birdsong Road exit at 2 p.m. or 1.56 p.m. on April the 6th? No, I don't know. I don't recall April the 6th. Okay. April the 9th, is it possible you were at, Bird, at the Tennessee River uh, area at 5.03 p.m.? I don't recall that. Do you remember being there on April the 9th as late as 8.13 p.m. on April the 9th. I don't recall that. Okay. There obviously was nothing dramatic that happened that, that I would that I would recall. I mean, if, if you got proof I was there, I was there. Do you remember being there at, in the Tennessee River location on April the 11th <laughs> with Zach Adams at 9.55 a.m.? That's correct. So this is two days earlier you were there at the river? Well, two days earlier, they wasn't a, kidnap or they wasn't a murderer, so I have no reason to... I mean, if your records show I was there, I was there. And there with Mr. Adams. If the records reflect that, that's true. Okay, and... Do you remember being over there at the Tennessee River on April the 14th at 6.44 p.m.? That's at 1.33? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying on April the 14th, the next day, you were over there at the Tennessee River at 6.44 p.m. Where, where this occurred? In the Tennessee River area, yes. Okay, yeah. And you were there with Mr. Adams on that day? That's incorrect. 
So if the records show you were both over by the Tennessee River, that would be incorrect? I'm not saying he wasn't over there, but he wasn't with me. Okay. So on the 14th, you weren't there from approximately 6.44 p.m. until... Still there at 10 30. Does that sound right? I'm going to object at this point. I waited, but we've heard four dates. She keeps saying, Were you there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand the question. I don't understand how he can know what there is. Somewhere by the river is a big, big area. If she wants to ask him specifically, you know, about a, a Be place. more specific on your dates and places. Okay. I'm um, being specific on the day. I'm saying on April the 14th, 2011, were you in the, by the Tennessee River Birdsong Road exit area? Right there, and I'm talking about east of Birdsong Road. Were you over in that area? on the 14th at 6.44 p.m. If, if your records reflect that, that will be true. Okay. It, it, if, if you have facts of that, that's true. Okay. And then you stayed there that evening until quite late. You were there on the 14th until at least about 10.30 p.m. at the Tennessee River area off of Birdsong Road exit. That would be true, wouldn't it? If your records reflect that, yeah. And then on the 15th at 1.26 p.m., you are back over there at the Birdsong Road exit area near the Tennessee River. There's one thing that you need to realize is there's a bar less than a mile from there. So it's possible that I'm at this bar. I mean, I visited the Sunset Bar quite often. I don't recall all these days sitting at the river that, you, that you're allegedly saying I'm there. Is it possible I'm at Sunset Bar? Possibility. Got a lot of friends in that area. I mean, I, I don't know just because you say that I'm a river, I don't know where you're saying I'm at. I'm lost. Okay, so it's possible you were over there at the bar some of these times. That's correct, yeah. But that doesn't explain why you would be there at 10 o'clock in the morning. The bar wouldn't be open at 10 o'clock in the morning. Would That's an old redneck bar. It, it runs as long as you got money. Okay. <laughs> so then that might explain why you would be over there on April the 16th at 5.30 p.m. You could have been at the old Tennessee redneck bar. That's correct, yeah. Okay. And um, the same with April the 22nd at 1.58 p.m. You could have been at the Old Tennessee Redneck Bar, couldn't you? That's correct, yeah. And the same... What was the last date? Uh, April the 22nd at 1.58 p.m. And it's possible you were there that day with Zach Adams at that Old Redneck Bar, April the 22nd. That's incorrect. Okay. Um, how about April the 27th at 2.30, at 2.53 p.m.? It's possible you were there at this redneck bar that day. Yeah, it's possible, yeah. I mean, you're, you're discussing stuff that I don't even have a clue what was going on April the 27th. After I mean, the 27th? if your records say that I was in that area, then I was in that area. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit and try to argue the facts. If you have facts, I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, you're not presenting nothing to me where I can see them. On, um, it's true that Terry Lynn Renfro used to buy stolen goods from you or trade you stolen goods and give you drugs in exchange, isn't it? That's correct. And a lot of times you would meet Terry Lynn Renfro off of the Birdsong Road exit to exchange drugs for stolen items, isn't it? That's incorrect. Okay. 
And you talked about the deer stand and when the deer stand was stolen. And you said Zach Adams stole a deer stand and you stole the trail cam that was there at the same place. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And now where you stole that from, that was off of the Birdsong Road there by north of Interstate 40, wasn't it? That's correct. It's over by the Tennessee River. It's on Eagle Creek. Is Eagle Creek right there by the Tennessee River? It's within five, six miles from it. Okay. And it's right there um, off of the Birdsong Road exit. And there's multiple ways to get to it, but you can get to Eagle Creek from 133. Okay. Okay. I'd like to ask you some questions. First, here, let me have a picture here. Looks like at the younger Mr. Autry. I, I guess I need to ask what the relevance would be. Generally, she wants to ask him about his record. You don't introduce his mugshot. I don't know what he plans to do. I, I'm going to introduce how tall he is. That he's six foot seven. Yes. How tall? Without, which is the, generally the way you do it, without trying to introduce a mugshot. Yeah. So, Mr. Autry, how tall are you? You're six foot seven inches tall, aren't you? That's pretty close. And how much do you weigh about? I guess about 250. And your hair is dark brown, is that right? Uh, I thought it had a little gray in it. <laughs> oh, it's, its original color was dark brown, is that right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. That, that's, a, that's a totally collateral issue. 
we, we, we're having enough trouble concentrating on this case without <clears throat> trying collateral cases, which is exactly what that would be. So, no, it's not coming in. Your Honor, for the record, it's my understanding the court intends to go tonight until I finish with Jason I would Autry. Like to, yes. But I would like the record to reflect it's very hot in here right now. I'd say it's 80 degrees in here. I see the jury sweating, different people I'm in court fanning Everybody, themselves. I've been watching this jury. They're ready to bring this thing to a conclusion. I recognize that, Judge, and so by making us go late at night, the jury's only going to be harboring ill feelings I towards me. I hope we don't go late at night. Well, I, I still have quite if a bit to do. If you continue to go through this, you do so at your own peril. Uh, Ask legitimate cross-examined questions, but let's focus. We, we spent, I guess, well over an hour on these maps. Certainly, that could have been done in a more succinct manner. So let's try to focus, and, and I'm, I'm not against you bringing up legitimate points, but let's don't be redundant, let's don't be repetitive. Uh, I think it's in everyone's best interest that we finish this witness today. So let's bring her I'd like in. to do an offer of proof as to the Aryan Nation information, Your Honor. You need Mr. Autry out to do this? Yes, Your Honor. All right, bring Autry in. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like, if at all possible, for us to conclude the testimony of this witness today. As a result, we'll be running a little later. Defense counsel has an absolute right to cross-examine the witness, to cover any areas that you feel appropriate. I tell both sides to please try to focus their uh, examination. So hopefully we'll pick it up a little, but I would like to finish this witness. Mr. Autry, I wanted to review when you said that you and Mr. Adams set uh, the body of Holly Bobo down on the rip wrap. Um, I wanted to understand exactly how you set her down. You were holding the um, the quilt. You said the quilt is wrapped up and you just grabbed the quilt with your two hands? That's correct. And you just lifted the quilt up and set it down on the rip wrap? I drug the upper torso to the end, he let the tailgate down. I proceeded out the tailgate, he grabbed the feet, and at that time we set the body down on what we decided was a 25 degree angle. Okay, and as you lift it up, I'm assuming that as you lift up the body, the feet on one end, and you're grabbing the torso on the other end, and set it over, it's kind of folding in the middle, is that right? That's correct. And then you set it down, uh, and you believe you set it down so that the torso is towards the top of the riprap? That's correct. And the body, I guess, is kind of bending in just a little bit with the feet down at the bottom? That's correct. Near the ground? Is that correct? That's correct. Um, now, Mr. Autry, you are a prolific letter writer, are you not? That's correct. So if I Ten notebooks full of letters that you've written while you were in jail. That would sound about right to you, wouldn't it? If that's what you got, yes, ma'am. And um, I mean, you write a letter to every day, don't you? That's correct. And you're aware that the TDOC has been collecting all your letters to uh, give. You know, they've been making copies of them. That's correct. Um, Matter of fact, your attorney has received some copies of your letters, hasn't he? You're asking me if I've ever mailed the attorney a letter? No. I'm saying you know that your attorney has gotten copies of letters you've written to other people while you were in jail as part of discovery. I suspect he has access to the discovery, yeah. Okay. I guess he has access to every letter I've ever wrote if he wants it. Matter of fact, when talking about access to discovery, when Fletcher Long was representing you, he, he even I gave you a copy. I have an objection as to prior representation, uh, statements made between the two. In fact, it was objected to when I wanted to go into something um, 
about that earlier, and I don't think it's fair at this time. She hasn't let me ask the question yet. Ask the question. Uh, he gave a, a copy of the entire discovery disc to your mother, didn't he? Answer. You can answer. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you remember when you were arrested on this case in March of 2014, don't you? I think that I was just carried to a room at River Bend and given the warrants by two, maybe three TBI agents. I don't think they ever arrested me. Okay, well, they handed you a copy of the indictment, I guess. That's correct. Okay. Um, and even before that, they had, Jeff Jackson had come to see you in Carroll County and had taken you in for inquiry at that time, hadn't he? That's correct. And at that time, you had complained to your mother because you said that they had almost broken your fingers when they did that, didn't they? That's correct. Your, two of your fingers on your right hand, didn't they? That's correct. At that time, Jeff Jackson told you... Objection. I am not offering it for the truth that what Jeff Jackson said is true. I am just offering to show what it effect it has on him. All right, you're not to consider it for the truth. Jeff Jackson told you that uh, Zach Adams and Shane Austin had already signed complaints or had signed statements against you, saying that you were guilty, didn't he? That's correct. Um, and at some point, Jeff Jackson told you that the whole reason that this case started was that um, that Zach Adams and Shane had showed up at Clint Bobo's house to make meth. Didn't he tell you that? That's, that's incorrect. So if you wrote that in a letter to your mother, that would not be accurate? That's correct. So you would have lied to your mother about that story? That's correct. And what about a telephone call with your mother? As, as I testified earlier, I, I denied any involvement until Mr. Parrish and Mr. Shule come on board. So. And they came on board in 2015, didn't they? Mm, yes, ma'am. They came on board Excuse about me. the time the state filed the notice of intent to seek death penalty against you, didn't they? I guess so, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not for sure of the exact date. <clears throat> you do remember giving um, an interview with Nick Barris, don't you? That's correct. And in the interview with Nick Barris, you specifically said that you were not a killer? That's correct. Um, you said that you, had, you were a drug addict and a thief, but not a killer, didn't you? That's correct. Um, you said you didn't want to speculate or make any kind of rumors of what happened to the girl. That's referring correct. Referring to Holly Bobo. That's correct. Um, he asked you, did you kidnap and kill Holly Bobo? Were you a part of that? And you said, by no means, Nick, did I bother that girl. That's correct. Um, and you said, I can't figure out why I've been done like this, didn't you? I don't know if I said them exact words or not. Okay. Um, Do you have a transcript that says that? Yes, if I have a transcript that says that, then would that be accurate? If, if, if that's what the records reflect, I guess so. Um, and referring to Dylan Adams, you said that he was lying to get out of trouble. He's down there. He's waited all this time. You know, he ain't been seen. He got by him. He got himself in a little bit of trouble. He's down there in Obion County, and he don't want this time, and he's making stuff up to get out of it. Didn't you say that? That's correct. I'm sorry. Can we read that one again? I'm, I missed the question. All right. Do, do it again. Okay. Um, you said, and you were referring to Dylan Adams, first of all, he's lying to get out of trouble. Didn't you say that? That, that wasn't the whole question. 
Well, I was just going to go through it piece by piece. I... Just do the whole question. Okay. okay. We're, we're trying to focus. Okay. First of all, you said he is lying to get out of trouble. He's down there and he's waited all this time. You know, he ain't seen that. He's got himself in a little trouble and he's down there in Obion County and he don't want to do his time and he's making stuff up to get out of it. Didn't you say that? That's correct. And you said at the time that um, it was a try to be for, to, uh, I mean, sorry. You said it was a try to be a forced move to get me to bear false witness against Zach Adams, didn't you? If your records reflect that, I said that. Because at the time you were objecting to the, to the um, fact that the state was trying to get you to cooperate, weren't you? I had not spoke to the state at no time during that period. You nor said, made any suggestions that would link anyone to believe that I wanted to cooperate with the state. Right, but you knew that there was pressure to have somebody cooperate, didn't you? I was under the assumption it was Dylan. You knew law enforcement. They tried to get you to cooperate directly, didn't they? When? Jeff Jackson came and talked to you and tried to get you to cooperate before you had an attorney. Is he, he, this before the charges? The yes, before the charges. Process, I think, is what she referred to earlier. Before the charges, yeah. He, Jeff Jackson wanted to know where the body was. That was his focal point. Right. And you said, I mean, I would have taken five years and $280,000 for my freedom if I knew. If I knew Nick, I'd tell them. You said that in your interview, didn't you? If your records reflect that, that's true. You said, no, sir, right hand before God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I did not bother that girl in no form or no fashion, didn't you? And that's a fact. And you were asked, do you know who did? You said, no, sir. That's a lie. But didn't you say that? That's correct. Okay. You said it had caused you a lot of sleepless nights, didn't you? your records reflect that, that's true. And you told um, Nick Barris that you were kin to Holly Bobo through your dad and her dad, didn't you? I think that's correct. And you said that growing up, her mother was your school teacher, didn't you? I believe that. I believe I said that. If your records reflect that, that's true. And you said, it never dawned on me, you know, that someday I was going to be falsely accused of this. Didn't you say that also? If your records reflect that, that's true. And you've had a lot of telephone conversations with your mother, Shirley King, haven't you? Numerous. And you know those telephone conversations are recorded? It tells you every time you pick up the phone. And you know that those telephone conversations are being provided to everybody in Discovery, don't you? It tells you that it's being recorded, yeah. You told your mom, Mama, I didn't. I swear right hand before. Uh, you said, I mean... 
I'll testify to what I know, I mean, and I'm going to, um, but, Mama, I'm innocent. That's right hand before God, I'm innocent. That's what you told your mother on the telephone, isn't it? I reckon that's what I'm here doing. But you told your mother that on the telephone, specifically. Yes. I mean, not just that's just one instance, but you told your mother that time and time again, didn't you? That's correct. Um, and you have actually a lot of people that you are pen pals with in prison, aren't you? A lot of people you're pen pals with in prison? Yeah, I have a lot of. And a lot of women that write you letters and you write letters too, don't you? That's correct. I mean, you've always had a girlfriend in the past, haven't you? That's correct. Um, matter of fact, at the present time, you're still married to Lisa Autry. That's correct. And um, recently, you wrote letters to Lisa Autry, or last January, saying that you would be home by this Christmas. Didn't you? If, you're, if, you're, if your records reflect that, that's true. Okay. together with Lisa and go back home and be a family by next Christmas, didn't you? If the letter reads that way, I said that. Okay. Your Honor, may I explain a little bit to that? You may. A prior letter coming into that was a response to that letter was it was Christmas time and the kids was feeling some kind of way and you know maybe that was an exaggeration I mean it's difficult it's a difficult position but if your letters reflect that that's what I did say I, I'm not denying it if you have that on the mail but in fact I believe I recall writing it okay. your kids are grown I mean they're over 18 that's correct um, and you also have a relationship with a woman named Linda Wallace, Linda Kimball Wallace, don't you? That's correct. I mean, at this current time, are you all still planning on getting married when you get out of prison? No, I don't. I mean, you know, love letters have, have wild endings, wild twists to them. But you've been writing to her saying she's going to be a preacher's wife and you all are going to get married, haven't you? I have told her that. And that you're expecting to get out of jail soon, haven't you? told her that. That's correct. Okay. Um, and right now, I heard you say you're serving a sentence. Has your federal time started at, currently? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I have no... I assume it's running. You have a federal sentence that you're facing. 922G. And that's a felon in possession charge, isn't it? It's 30 out 6 deer rifle. Okay, and what kind of time do you have on that sentence? I don't know at what I don't know at what period I'm in that. I mean, I, I don't know. I've not been in contact with the Federal Bureau of Prisons to know if the clock's running or the clock's not. What was what did you get initially? How much time? 100 months. And 100 months is just 85. It's what? 85 percent. Right, but 100 months is like Eight years and a third. Well, it's 85%, and 85% of 100 would be 85 months, right? Well, that's because prison has no parole. Federal prison does it. Federal prison has no parole, and so if you get a sentence, you have to serve at least 85% of it. Isn't that right? Can you answer out loud for the court? Yes. Okay. Um, and so if you have a 100-month sentence, you still have that to serve at some point. I assume I'm serving it. I mean, a day is a day. That's the and way I've always understood it. In December, you actually wrote to the federal court asking and how much. December of what year? December of 2016, you wrote to the federal court asking how much time did you have remaining on your sentence, didn't you? If your records reflect that, that's true. Because in December, it became pertinent as to when you might be getting out of custody, didn't it? I mean, 
I'm curious after 60, 60 months how long I've got and if the time's running was the purpose of, of writing. The purpose of writing the letter was to, just, to find out if the clock was running or the clock wasn't running. So when you initially came into custody, you came into custody in uh, 2012, is that right? September the 22nd, 2012. Okay. And at that time you got a state sentence to serve, didn't you? It was run concurrent with the federal sentence. Okay. What was the state sentence to serve? How long was that? I believe it was three years. For the theft of the deer camera, is that what you're speaking on? Yes. I believe it was a three-year sentence run concurrent with the federal sentence. Did you have any parole violations or probation violations that were put into effect also? I did not. Okay. Um, and so well, while you were at Riverbend, you had, you had complained bitterly about your treatment there, haven't you? Objection relevance. It's relevant because if he's getting really bad treatment, that gives him a, a motive to try to do a deal, Your Honor. Ask a question. Uh, you had real complaints about your treatment while you were at Riverbend, didn't you? That's correct. Um, matter of fact, they have had you in solitary confinement, haven't they? That's correct. Solitary confinement is very hard to take, isn't it? I mean... I would rather be there than Henderson County Jail. I have a TV and a radio and go outside. Uh, it's, I don't know how you would, I mean, it's. So Henderson County Jail is also hard to take, isn't it? Is that what we can I conclude? think jail in general can be, can be difficult. Okay. I mean, certainly if you were considering spending a lifetime in jail, that could be very difficult, couldn't it? Yeah, I and guess so. There's a lot of stress that comes knowing that you have a potential death sentence hanging over your head, isn't there? That's correct. I mean, that, that has to bother you and eat at you every day, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It actually doesn't because I bear a clear conscience. I know in my heart that I did not kidnap her. I did not rape her. And I did not kill her. Well, you were right there wanting Holly Bobo killed, weren't you? That's correct. So it was your intent to see that she died, according to your story, isn't it? It was not my intent to see that she died. Well, after you got there and you realized that she had said your name, or heard your name, um, it was your intent then to make sure she was eliminated as a witness against you. That's incorrect. I was under the impression that she was dead before I got in the truck, and we never established that she heard my name. Remember, we had a, we said it is possible. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> but, okay, I mean, I'm just. But you're saying at the time when you thought that she had heard your name, you knew Zach Adams, according to your story, was getting ready to shoot her. You never said, stop, don't do it, did you? That's correct. You said, wait a minute, let me make sure nobody's coming. That's correct. So you did something to help him kill her, according to your story, didn't you? I did, and I have lots of remorse over that. So, but at the time, you were there, according to you, to assist him in killing her, weren't you? No. That's a mischaracterization of what it said. We We've been assistance. over and over and over and over. Let's move on. Uh, you've written letters where you said they don't have a case, I'm innocent, didn't you? If your records reflect that, that's true. Uh, you've written letters where you said up front, I have nothing to do with Holly Bobo, no form, no fashion, right hand before God, that's the truth. <coughs> you said that, didn't you? I testified earlier that I had lied multiple times in the mail and on the phone calls. Okay. And you said, Mr. John, there is no way they have a case. I am an innocent man. Uh, it's awful funny, man. Uh, miss, my attorney still hadn't got no motion of discovery. Eleven months and still no evidence. Did you say that? At some point you did, didn't you? 
If your letter, if your records reflect that, that's true. Okay. I never, I never got no portion of discovery from Fletcher Long or John Herberson. Nothing. He began to send you your discovery, didn't he? He sent me um, a small portion of them letters that you're reflecting to. No, but he sent you, he was printing for days and days all kinds of materials to send you. He did not. So, he sent a very, very small portion. So it, you had materials of your discovery in your cell, didn't you? For probably a month or so, I was taking out of the cell for painting and cleaning for about four hours. And when I come back, a large portion of it was missing. On over a month or so later, some guys from TDOC come in and seized another large portion of it. And that was sent what wasn't kept to Mr. Show's office. So what I ended up with was a stack of letters that I wrote. So sometimes when your Aunt Rita and Uncle Jimmy would come to visit you, you would bring them portions of your discovery and show them through the glass different areas you had highlighted, wouldn't you? I don't recall that. It's possible you did that? What was it I showed them? Different items in your discovery where you would highlight different things and and show them different I mean different pages where people had made statements evidence that you thought was false. I don't recall that. I do not. Okay. So you have an immunity agreement through the federal courts from the Department of Justice, don't you? That's correct. And um, initially, the, the prosecutor in this case was a woman named Beth Hall. Do you know Beth Hall? I do. Uh, she was a state prosecutor um, when Hansel McAdams was the district attorney, wasn't she? I believe you're correct. I, I'm not really sure who the... And then she was your federal prosecutor when you had your gun charge, wasn't she? That's correct. Okay. Um, and you're aware that if you testify um, in a helpful manner in this case, it would be possible for the federal case, the sentence you've already received, it would be possible to get that sentence reduced or completely uh, obliterated using a Rule 35 motion, wouldn't it? So I'm not aware is, of Rule 35s and how state and federal stuff operate. I'm sorry. I, so you're testifying here today, you're telling the jury today that you have absolutely no knowledge that what you do here might affect the federal sentence that you have to serve of 100 months? I do not. I have immunity with the federal government. Other than that, there's no deal. <coughs> Plain and simple. Right, but there's a potential deal. 
It, it remains out there. You're saying that, not me. I'm asking you if you're aware that there's a possible deal that could be made in the future. Have you ever heard of it happening before? Yes. Have you? Just then. Okay. So your federal deal, they, you, um, I thought there was a difference between state court and federal court. Um, Obviously I was wrong. In your federal case, <clears throat> or, I'm sorry, you faced a potential death sentence in a federal case if this killing occurred on federal property. Isn't that right? No, I've been given immunity. Well, but, but that's what you get, were given immunity from, were any federal charges. I don't know what I was given immunity for. You, you'll have to ask Mr. Show. He's, he's the counsel that I did not handle that. And you have a federal immunity agreement. I've never seen it. I mean, nor was I present when it was worked out with the federal government. That was. That information I was privileged enough to get through Mr. Show and Mr. Parrish. Well, I'd like to pass this up to you and have you look at this document and see if you recognize it. What is this? That's your federal immunity agreement. Is that your signature on the second page along with Mr. Show's signature? It is. Okay. So you've signed that federal immunity agreement. That's correct. And now do you recognize it that you've looked at it? That's correct. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer that as an exhibit. Do you want me to sign it? No, you've already signed it. Who do I give this to? Uh, give it to the bailiff, give it to the reporter, that will be 186, correct? Yes, sir. And um, I'd like to pass up the next one, too, please. Yes. Oh, no. yes. <coughs> Judge, the next is his proper agreement with the state. It's not any kind of immunity. It's just saying he has to tell the truth when he's talking to us. I don't really have an, uh, an objection, I don't guess, but it's, it's not an immunity agreement. Just him saying. They said they have no objection. Yeah. You want it in? Uh, yes, please. All right, file it 187. Now, this agreement that you have with the state, um, did you get a chance to look at it? Your signature is on it. Do you have any reason to believe it's not your signature on this agreement? I do not. Okay. Um, and what this says is that anything that has what this is, this immunity, uh, not this um, proffer. proffer letter that you have with the state of Tennessee. And the proffer is for the um, interview that we had with him. That was for, that was an agreement between his counsel and my office that we could talk to him period yes and so what this says is anything that you said and it, it doesn't specifically say it's only for one session it just says the things that you tell the state during a proffer session will not be used directly against you isn't that right if the letter reads that that's correct okay so well, you went over it with your attorney, didn't you, Mr. Scholl and Mr. Paris? I looked over it. That's correct. Okay. And so you understood that by going into that uh, proffer session, what you say in that meeting, they could not then turn around and use it directly against you. That's what the agreement states. Yes. And, um, but... What it does depend on is you testifying honestly and cooperating with the state from that point forward, doesn't it? That, 
me signing that paper wasn't an agreement to testify. No, it, it specifically does require that that you need to be honest in what you do, doesn't it? That's correct. Matter of fact, it says third, in the event if your client becomes a witness in any judicial proceeding, including the prosecution of him in any criminal case, and offers testimony materially different from any statements made during the proffer, the state may, may not cross-examine concerning those statements made during the proffer. However, if he's called to testify at trial, uh, against any or both of his co-defendants, then the substance of this proper and material differences shall be disclosed to the other defendant or defendants. Doesn't it say that? Yes. I mean, if you read, you read it right off there, yeah, if that's what it reads, yes. But it also says that they can take the information that they get from this and they can make derivative use of it, meaning they can go out and do their own investigation and then use that information against you, doesn't it? I guess so, yeah. I mean, I'm not understanding the full scope of what you're saying, but I'm not disagreeing either. I mean, I, I'm not an attorney. I don't understand the, the language. So what happens to you in the future really depends now on, on how your case goes, doesn't it? I mean, that's an answer for the DA and, and the counsel. Well, you recognize that if the district attorney decided that you were, quote, lying, they could come back and continue prosecuting you, don't you? If you say so. And you're really expecting that you're going to do little or no additional jail time after this case is over, aren't you? I testified at the beginning that I was hoping for leniency. But by leniency, you're, you wrote to your family saying you were hoping to get out by Christmas, didn't you? May I ask the date of that letter? We, we, we all know that that's not going to happen. That. He's answered that earlier. He actually offers a further explanation. He wanted to explain it. If I can have during your proper session, you specifically said that the gun that Shane Austin had was a 38 or a 357, didn't you? That's correct. That's what I was under the impression of, of it being. Well, that's before they found a gun in a creek, isn't it? The gun. And the gun they found in a creek is a 32, isn't it? If you say so. You don't know what caliber that gun is? I do not. So you just eyeballed that gun and you're just pretty sure even though it's rusted, it's the same gun? That is the same gun. It's the same gun, but you have to admit it's much rustier than it was when you claimed to have originally seen it. The blue in is off of it and it's aged. Okay.
So not only did you give an interview to Nick Barris with Channel 5, you also wrote him some letters, didn't you? That's correct. And you wrote him letters saying that Lisa Autry was a wolf in sheep's clothing and lying, didn't you? That's correct. And you knew that she was lying and a wolf in sheep's clothing because you had seen the discovery that included reports of what she had told the police, didn't you? That's incorrect. I mailed her a letter. That I mailed Nick Barris a letter that, that Lisa had written me. I've never seen nothing that links Lisa to the discovery. Lisa wrote me a letter, a, a series of letters, claiming that she had... I, I don't want to hear what she said in the letter. That would be hearsay. Um, so basically what you want this jury to believe here today is that you're facing a death sentence in this case and that you've now come in and you've testified before them about the, quote, truth of what happened that day, but you only hope for leniency and you have no other expectation as to what's going to happen to you. I've come in here and admitted my wrongs, admitted where I've lied, testified to the truth, and I hope for leniency. That's correct. No further questions. Further direct. When you got to Shane Austin's house, on April the 13th, 2011, you were asked to draw two cars in that diagram for Ms. Thompson. That's correct. What other cars were there, or trucks? Behind the house was a black S10. Who, whose truck was that? Mr. Austin's. What about Dylan's truck? It was not there. You were asked what you were wearing on April 13, 2011, what was Zach Adams wearing? Camouflage. What was on his feet? I don't recall. Thank you. Nothing else, Sean. Anything else? No, no. All right. We're going to recess for the day. Uh, we're about an hour later than what I'd like to, but I want to finish this witness. Follow the rules I gave at the outset. Leave your notebooks in here. We'll be secure. Uh, I'll see you folks in the morning. Thank you.